In this presentation, we'll be reviewing the anatomy of the large intestine in preparation to learn positioning and image evaluation criteria. The large intestine is approximately five feet long and begins at junction of the small intestine and ends at the anus. It forms an arch around the loops of the small intestine and consists of four main parts, the cecum, the colon, the rectum, and the anal canal. The colon itself has four portions, listed in order of antegrade stool travel, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, and the sigmoid colon. A series of pouches along the large intestine called haustra assist in additional absorption of the nutrients and can provide secretions to allow stool to pass. Muscular bands that help form the haustra are called tinea coli. The pouch-like portion inferior to the junction of the ileum and the colon is called the cecum. Also part of the large intestine is the vermiform appendix. This is attached to the posterior medial side of the cecum. For the purposes of radiographic examination of the large intestine, we will fill it with contrast media in retrograde flow. So it's important to know the order of travel and be able to identify each portion in reverse order as well. As you can see in this radiograph, the anatomy is not identical to the typical textbook shape, and the proportions of each section will vary from patient to patient. We'll be discussing positional considerations to compensate for these variations in the lab. The most distal portion, which follows the curve of the sacrum anteriorly, is the rectum. During a barium enema, the enema tip is placed through the anus into the rectal ampulla, then a balloon is inflated just past the anus, helping the patient to retain the contrast media for the duration of the exam. As with any muscle, the anus can be strong or weak and have tension or laxity. It will ultimately be up to the radiologist to determine the proper amount of balloon inflation required, but the technologist will insert the enema tip. There are three main turns that the colon takes between each of its four sections. The right colic flexure, also known as the hepatic flexure, has a sharp angle connecting the ascending and transverse colon. This flexure is more inferior to the left colic flexure due to the presence of the liver, which displaces it inferiorly. The left colic flexure, also known as the splenic flexure, forms a sharp angle at the junction of the transverse and descending colon. And finally, the sigmoid portion forms an S-shaped loop and ends at the rectum at the level of the third sacral segment. The rectum extends from the sigmoid colon to the anal canal, and the anal canal terminates at the anus. The function of the large intestine is for the reabsorption of the fluids and elimination of waste products in the form of feces.